Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. Today we're at the AATS Mitral Conclave in New York City. This conference room is gonna fill up with over 1,000 cardiologists and cardiac surgeons from all over the world. We're gonna be talking with several surgeons and cardiologists about the latest trends in education specific to mitral valve therapy. Well, I wanted to continue the legacy of one of my mentors, Elaine Carpentier. I approached the American Association for Thoracic Surgery, which is really our, the scholarship society in our community, and they were very supportive of it. And with their leadership, we basically put together a worldwide meeting, and I'm very proud of it. David Adams has done a fantastic job of organizing this symposium, and I think it's become the largest mitral valve uh, symposium in its short existence anywhere on the planet. And certainly if you sit in the room and you listen to the speakers and you look out around the crowd to see who's attending, you see that this is the who's who of mitral valve surgery. And I'd like to learn from their techniques as well as a sharing of knowledge and hopefully a benefit to patients across both sides of the ocean. This is where we really talk about the latest therapy for patients. And we share internationally, nationally and we get new ideas. It's like uh, getting your knowledge by uh, taking a drink from a fire hose. It's just amazing uh, the talent that's congregated here for this. I see many patients with, with uh, heart valve disease. I also teach and, and lecture about this. So it gets me up to speed with all of the really important, innovative new things that are going on. It helps me uh, determine you know, the, the next strategy for my patients. Coming to an event like the Mitral Conclave or, or any major educational event is incredibly important. You don't want the surgeon to be somebody who just stands still and says, I've always done it this way the last 20 years. Surgeons need to keep learning just like everybody else. And coming to an event like the Mitral Conclave, going to academic meetings, reading, watching other surgeons, these are all ways to keep getting better, which means we do a better job for our patients. Well, discussions about technology are very important. Uh, ultimately, the reason why we're using a technology in mitral valve surgery is to improve patients' outcomes. And I believe this is a phenomenal forum to share our early results. Meetings like this are probably the most important thing for education, not just of surgeons or cardiologists, but for patients. They need to know what a quality outcome in mitral valve surgery really is. There's nearly a thousand surgeons here can see the experts do what they do, but so that the surgeons who might see five mitral valve operations a year, like what is the average in the United States, might learn what their limitations are and where they shouldn't do it, and where they should be referring a patient out to a center or a surgeon who has much more experience. If they're, if they're being referred for surgery, it's very important that they go to a place that does lots of mitral valve surgery. It is important to be sure you're dealing with uh, doctors and institutions that do a lot of this kind of work and have a lot of experience. So in addition to the main exhibit hall, there's also two breakout sessions that are going on at all times during the mitral conclave. These breakout sessions, as you can see behind me, are standing room only with several hundred people in each of the rooms. So you know, a breakout session is additional topics that are being discussed by cardiologists and surgeons throughout the days here at the mitral conclave. Well, even though it is a mitral conclave, Adam, we're talking about all sorts of things that are related. For instance, about 30 to 40 percent of patients have atrial fibrillation and irregular heart rhythm. So that'll be one of the topics that we talk about. And then many of the patients also have a leaky tricuspid valve. And so even though it is a mitral conclave, we're talking about all the other associated diseases that go with that. The uh, heart muscle itself uh, pumps better uh, if you uh, repair rather than replace the valve. And generally, we like to keep the patient not one second longer than they need to be there so that infection uh, is, is, they're not at risk for infection. However, for mitral valve surgery, infection is an extremely rare complication. And the fact of the matter is, is that uh, people who have aortic valve disease, they have a little bit of a higher incidence of mitral valve disease than the normal person. So you're right, I'm an aortic specialist, but I'm here at the mitral conclave for, for that reason. It's, a, it's fun for me because I, I get to pick other surgeons' brains who have the same types of problems and see the same types of, of circumstances that I see every day. So it's really an outstanding sharing uh, of information as well as a collegial 
uh, good to see my friends uh, as well as you uh, here at these events.